At the port of embarkation, work has proceeded for many days, quietly and efficiently. Since for every soldier landed overseas, an initial 15 tons of supplies and equipment must be provided. At an average of two tons a month, shipped to maintain him in the field. When an invasion ship is loaded, each object must be in its appointed place, so that when the crucial moment of unloading comes, perhaps under enemy bombardment, those weapons and supplies which are needed first will be the first at hand. Of the 900,000 categories of supplies the Army Service Forces must procure and distribute, a high percentage is required for the Army's work of invasion and occupation and must accompany the expeditionary force on the day it puts to sea. tip from, it's hot. In Washington, they're laying four to one that the big invasion will get underway by Friday. On Ealing Day, nothing can have been overlooked. No detail unforeseen. And above all, the plan of attack and the plan of supply must have been meticulously coordinated and timed to the fraction of an hour, even though the objective be an invasion point still thousands of miles away. When an invasion convoy clears the port of embarkation, the ASF has accomplished only the first part of its appointed task. It has mobilized from far and wide those men and resources which can solve the problem of logistics and give an army the power to invade and to invade victoriously. But as long as an American soldier still is under arms at home or on a foreign shore, so long will America's army be dependent on the smooth and unceasing functioning of the army service forces, on the foresight, skill, and patience of those men who have welded it into the military link between American efficiency in production, management, and invention, and the needs of America's fighting men. Time marches on.